So starting things off with the Sand Slash line, uh, we can see Sand Slash and Alolan Sand Slash. Note that the Alolan forms are coming back for like Alolan Sand Slash, Alolan Marowak, Alolan Executor, and I think that might be it. But uh, yeah, Sand Slash is good on both those forms. In singles, Sand Slash is a really, really good lead for lower tier Smogon forms. So like I've gone and I've gone, I've used Sand Slash, OU, UU, uh, RU, all those tiers. Sand Slash is super good. Gets Rabbit Spin, gets that Stabbed Earthquake. A low in slash does those a lot better in doubles, and I really like Owen Sanchez because it's a really, really fast slush rush user. 55 base speed is fast enough to be technically used, and uh, I really like using Aurora Veil with it. So I really do like the uh, low in Sanchez coming back. We're gonna see what we can make it. We're gonna see what we can get done with that Pokemon in the Let's Go singles. A low in Sanchez was actually a really, really unique. Uh, it's a really, really unique Pokemon. So we'll see how that works. Galarian Growlithe. I've not seen that. Uh, Clefable, or sorry, not Clefable, um, what is it? Freaking, to yeah, I can't even talk. Wigglytuff, OMG. Wigglytuff coming back is actually really nice. People are talking about, uh, Wigglytuff being a check to Dragapult. I think that's actually a pretty decent, uh, check to Dragapult. It's a normal fairy, so it's a little bit better than just, like, Clefable. So you can still block those ghost attacks. I've been talking about how, uh, normal types are one of the best types in the game right now. So you can just switch them in on teams that go super hard on, like, policy proccing their ghost teammate. So Wigglytuff with competitive, so if they go for like a Intimidate or a stat dropping move or even like Max Phantasm or Max Worm when your teammates, uh, you get a competitive proc and that's really, really nice. Was there a meta for Let's Go? Yeah, there was. And uh, we made a lot of content. We made a lot of content for Let's Go. What up, dog? Enjoy any of the DLC or just been on Ranked? Uh, so Ranked's down, but we've been just doing uh, just regular ladder. Yeah, it's immune to Dragon and Worm, but you can hit the teammate, right? You can hit its teammate, right? Uh, up next is the Golduck line. I think Golduck is one of my favorite Swift Swimmers. Um, I used it a lot in Worlds 2017, a lot of the 2017 format. Golduck historically was the one Swift Swimmer that got Encore. Now that they've given Encore to pretty much everyone, it's not nearly as good, but I still think Golduck has a niche because Golduck can get a couple of really good things. We might not even be able to use it with Swift Swim anymore. It might just be a better Cloud9 user to be able to stop weather, but overall Golduck's always going to be really good. I'm happy they brought it back because it's one of my favorites. Uh, we showed off Politoed in uh, today's video. So Politoed's, sorry, not Politoed, Polyrath. Polyrath's so much better. Uh, Polyrath's really good. Uh, it gets Swift Swim as well, but it's a fighting water. Uh, it's similar to that Urshifu with the water type, but the thing is, like, Urshifu doesn't have Swift Swim, right? That's, like, the big thing. Urshifu doesn't have Swift Swim, doesn't get moves like Hypnosis, doesn't get moves like Encore, Ally Switch, stuff like that. So I think Polyrath is definitely better than it's ever been. It gives Ray matchup uh, a, a secondary way to deal with those sand teams without having to really commit to things. Uh, we used a wider set, and that can, uh, you know, if you avoid... Either, even if you get intimidated, you can still like one shot their big intimidators, and it's really, really nice. Steel Wing Dragapult would handle Wigglytuff, right? Well, the thing is, like, Wigglytuffs are all probably going to be carrying up a Berry Berry, right? They're probably all going to be carrying up a Berry Berry. And the thing is, like, are you really going to have to run that just so you don't automatically lose? <laughs> and what if they, if they Dynamax too, you don't kill them? But yeah, like, I don't think that's worth it. Well, and Raichu's not on here. Yeah, Well, and Raichu's not on here, but it should be. It should be. Yeah. Caught the Golduck earlier, and it used. The move Wonder Room, is that ever any good? It's not. <laughs> I feel like Wigglytuff would be bulky enough to handle a Steel Wing. It probably would be, but if it uses a Max Steel Wing, like a Max Steel Spike, it might KO. Uh, Alakazam is next. I think Alakazam is going to completely be a good Pokemon, at least in singles. I think uh, as long as Pokemon with 120 base speeds are really, really good, and Alakazam gets a lot of new tools, like an AoE Psychic move. Uh, if Psychic trains up, that's like really, really good. Psy Spam is going to be back in action, so Alakazam is a really good Pokemon. Tentacruel line. I'm really actually, I'm actually super excited to see the Tentacruel line. Tentacruel, um, it's a water poison, but I actually think it's better as a physical attacker. Um, in 2017, 2018, there was a couple people that took physical Tentacruel to events with like Swords Dance and just tore up all the teams with Tapus because Tentacruel is 100 base speed. Like Tentacruel outspeeds Urshifu and no one like notices that. And so like Tentacruel being able to like outspeed um freaking and it has clear body too that's like the thing it has clear body so like you don't have to worry about intimidate so like you they lead arcanine you lead tentacruel and you just slam them in the face and you can go for so many different things with tentacruel yeah i'm like actually really really excited and that's gonna be a pokemon you ex you can expect to see me use a lot i know uh slowbro is another pokemon that a lot of people are excited about i'm not excited about it slowbro sucks like, if everyone's like, yeah, but it has poison typing. I, I think the only reason people are excited about it is because it's the only real new Pokemon coming out. It doesn't change the fact that, like, it goes second. It's not really that strong. It's not really that bulky. They gave it a decent enough ability, but, like, anytime you do an ability that's almost as good as an item, eh, if it's not boosting your damage or giving you extra bulk, it's like, eh. 
I'm just, I'm not sold on Slowbro. I'm not. I'm just not sold on it. Maybe you guys can prove me wrong. Do shouldn't have been RNG. What what do you think? It should just have always gone first. That's a little bit busted. Uh, do we know all the base stats on Urshifu? Yes, we do. Um, up next is. Magnezone, I think Magnezone's actually, and Magneton, I think they're both really good. Magneton actually is one of the few Pokemon that is a, a not fully evolved Pokemon that you can use without using the Evilite because it gets sturdy and it has a decent speed stat. stat. So Scarf Magnezone has actually seen a lot of play in previous formats. And, sorry, Magneton, I keep doing that. Scarf Magneton's seen play in previous formats, and uh, it's probably still going to see play in this one because it's actually one of those Pokemon that like wasn't supposed to get an evolution, so it's actually like fully functional just by itself. Executor and Low Executor are back. I think both of them are going to heavily impact the meta in a positive way. Executor with Chlorophyll is a good check to Venusaur because it's a Psychic type. So you can give a big stab Psychic into the Venusaur. And they both have Chlorophyll and Executor is bulky enough to eat a Sludge Bomb. And note that like, if they were to both Dynamax, right? If the Venusaur Dynamaxes and the Executor Dynamaxes, um, you know, they have to use a Max Ooze, which is weaker, and use a Max uh, Mindstorm, which is stronger. So, like, 95 or 90 base special attack versus, like, a 130 special attack. You'd one-shot them back, and you'd live just fine. So, Executor's really cool. Uh, it's a, another option instead of Venusaur that is also, like, really, really fun to use. And Alone Executor is the only, correct me if I'm wrong, the only Dragon-type Trick Room Setter. So, that's really, really cool. So, being... Being able to be a Grass Dragon and be able to set Trick Room with a pretty unique typing with, like, Harvest, it's like a mix of, like, a Trevenant, but it's a Dragon type. And that's dope. Like, that is really, really good. After that, we have Marowak and Alola Marowak. Both of them are actually good. Um, you don't actually need to run them with a Thick Club, and you don't re really need to run them aggressive. You can actually run them uh, with completely, like, defensive sets, and they'll be really good. They get Will-O-Wisp. Sorry, they low and one gets Will-O-Wisp. But more importantly, they both get Lightning Rod. I think the last time Regor Marowak did well was in 2013 Worlds. I think there was a top... It was either top four or top eight in 2013 Worlds used a Regor Marowak. And Alolan Marowak won the World Championships in 2017, I believe. So both of them are pretty good. I, I expect to use a lot of Marowak. I almost used Marowak in the team that we use today, but I used Aegislash instead. Um, it's a good Pokemon. It'll see a lot of play. Uh, Lickitung and Licky Licky, both coming back, are really, really good. Uh, Lickitung, not so much, but Licky Licky is a really good Cloud9 user. Cloud9 users are relatively underrated, and they're actually pretty good at dealing with uh, all the various forms of weather. Chansey coming back is a little bit problematic, but it's not. I'm going to explain why it's not that big of an issue. Everyone's like, oh, Chansey's going to break the game. Chansey only was bad, or Chansey was only bad for the game when Minimize was everywhere. You Minimize with your Chansey, and you know... Back in Gen 7, you know, you had your Z-move, but you only had one Z-move. And it had to be a physical Z-move. That way you could play around the, uh, you know, chance he's setting up all over you. Otherwise, you'd miss forever. But now with you can just Dynamax and you get three turns of I can't miss. You get three turns of Z-move. Chance he's not nearly going to be as problematic. In singles, it'll still be a little bit toxic, I think. Uh, just because Chance he's just a stall champion uh, with the EV light. But it's not that big of a deal, I promise you. It's not like, it's not like Dynamax Chance he's actually going to ever do anything either. So we'll see. I haven't even seen if they change its moveset at all. Like maybe if they took away size and toss off it, which they probably haven't, um, it wouldn't be able to do shit, you know? So we'll see how Chansey holds up. Another EV Light user is Tangela. Tangela is actually a really, really unique EV Light user, and it's the one of three Pokemon in the game that can actually use the move Rage Powder. So Butterfree was the only one before the DLC. Volcarona can use Rage Powder, and Tangela can use Rage Powder. And what sets Tangela apart from the other two is that it's really slow. So if I were to lead like Tangela and Dusclops, or Tangela and Hatterene, I could go Rage Powder Trick Room and then have a slow Pokemon to then use my Rage Powders with. And if, like, let's say I brought Torkoal up mid game, uh, I can then regain my speed boost once a Trick Room's over. Uh, the you know, speed boost thanks to the Chlorophyll ability, and then I could go fast. So it's like, imagine if your Venusaur could work in Trick Room. That's Tangela. And also, it had Rage Powder. It's pretty good. Tangela is actually a very, very cool Pokemon. I'm excited to see it back. Is Dark Urshifu that bad? I understand the quad fairy weakness, but also has two less weaknesses. Um, I think the fact that, like, I, I, I don't know if it's good or bad. I haven't looked at it. So it's like, who said it was bad? I don't think any of them are that bad. But uh, up next is the Seedra line. We'll talk about Kingdra when we get to it. Seedra coming back is cool. It's pretty much just coming back so we can use Kingdra. Starmie coming back is actually really nice. Uh, I'm really, I'm really really excited to use Starmie. 115 base speed mons are pretty good, and I think Starmie has really good typing. I think Starmie can do a lot. I think Starmie's going to be very, very fun to use in singles if there's a lot less Mimikyu. I think Starmie, with the right set, can be a decent Cinderace check, too. So I, I'm i going to use a lot of Starmie. I love Starmie. Those guys who watch a Let's Go content know that I like Starmie a lot. So Starmie's a lot of fun. We'll use it for sure. 
and going for Scyther. I know a lot of people have wanted to say um, that Scyther, like, I want to see Scyther content, Scyther, Scyther. Maybe we'll make some Scyther teams. Uh, I know I have, like, a Scizor, and I like Scizor, but Eevee Light Scyther is actually okay. It actually has a pretty decent base speed. It's a 105 base speed mon. So yeah, Eevee Light Scyther is going to be usable I because it gets like that big stab on all those Airstream moves. So it's actually a decent max mon. It can go for U-turns if you want. It's going to be okay. It's going to be an okay mon. We'll see if we can make it work. But it looks cool. Scyther definitely looks cool. Has a different stat line than Scizor. Both get the boost from the Technician ability. Uh, Scyther gets that air slashy move that hits multiple times. It's like an air dragon darts. It gets a Technician boost and it stabs it. So it's like big damage from like maybe like a banded Scyther on that 105 base speed. I'd be down to try that out. Uh, I'm going to talk about Tauros and Pinsir in the same area because I think they both get anger points. Um, it's an ability that says when you get critical hits, you uh, maximize your attack. So you can use a move that automatically critical hits, like Frostlass gets, uh, or Frostlass and Glaceon gets, um, what is that move even called? It's a move that automatically critical hits. It's like a 40 base power move. It doesn't really do that much. But then from there, you just slam in a plus six rock slide, plus six earthquake, which is AoE moves, and you're fine. Uh, you can also use it with like a Togekiss uh, that uses extreme speed with like a scope lens and super luck, right? And you can play around the follow me because remember, guys, E speed is faster. Extreme speed's faster than follow me. So remember the other one, uh, you know, Frost Breath, you could redirect it with a Rage Powder or follow me. You can't redirect the E speed. So you can go for that turn one E speed, self proc, one shot everything. Tons of people are going to be doing that. If you think that that's like crazy new meta, you could you just don't, haven't watched Pokemon enough. Because that, that was a really popular core way back. It's always going to be popular. Um, it's nothing new, and I'm going to let other people do that. It's not as crazy as it sounds, and it's really easy to deal with. So, yeah, we'll see how this goes. Like, it loses to Wide Guard, you know? E-Speed's the same priority as Follow Me, but the thing is it's like Togekiss is faster than like all the other Follow Me users in the format. Because you'd be going with a full-speed Togekiss. Uh, they're both uh, three priority, right? Didn't know uh, Porygon was making appearance. Porygon coming back is what we're talking about next. It's actually a little bit bad for the game, but we'll talk about that when we get to Porygon 2. Iglybuff and Meryl, um, you know, they lead into, well, the Meryl leads into Azumarill, which is pretty good. I think Azumarill is going to be pretty good in singles. I'm excited to use Azumarill. Belly Drum sets are pretty popular. I like uh, Choice Band sets and Limberry sets myself. But uh, Politoed is another Pokemon that a lot of people are excited to see back. Um, we made a video talking about Politoed, talking about why it's not really going to help out Rain that much. We made a really good Rain team that didn't even use it, like didn't even half want it. So Politoed's cool, but I don't think it'll be really good for Rain. I think Politoed, like Politoed Scizor is good. Politoed, uh, freaking Executor, Politoed Venusaur, Politoed with Pokemon that doesn't want to take big fire damage is good. You don't really need Politoed in your Rain team. Slowking's cool. I like Slowking more than Slowbro. Uh, Psychic Water is better typing than Psychic than Water Poison. Uh, I will go back and amend a little bit of the Galarian Slowbro and say that Galarian Slowbro fits a niche in singles where it deals with both Toxapex and Clefable being unable to get Toxic stalled. And that's pretty good. Slowbro can be good in singles. Maybe. Because it still takes that really, really fat ghost damage. And that's bad. Right? So, that's bad. <laughs> but we'll see. I like Slow King more. Uh, that's just my opinion. Um, I think Dunsparce is going to be really, really cool. Dunsparce is like the best Pokemon's ever seen in their life. Uh, Dunsparce is the best. Really, because I haven't seen Dunsparce content on my channel. There's a tons of Dunsparce content on this channel. Uh, historically, the set you want to use with Dunsparce is Serene Grace. You pop a move called Agility. You make the Dunsparce hold a Focus Sash or an Adrenaline Orb. And, uh, you know, once you get that speed boost from your Adrenaline Orb or your Agility, you use a move called Rock Slide, which has normally a 30% chance to flinch. It hits both your opponents. Or you can use Headbutt. Normally a 30% chance to flinch. But if you uh, are holding the Serene Grace, right? If you're holding Serene Grace Sereno, you double that. 60% chance to flinch both your opponent's Pokemon. It's the best thing you've ever seen in your life. I swear, Dunsparce is busted. You know, you can't flinch the Max Mons, so that was really going to play. It's going to make Dunsparce hard to use. Doesn't mean I'm not going to do it. So we'll use a lot of Dunsparce, I'm sure. Really, really happy to see this guy back. I'm really, really excited. Uh, Scizor is another Pokemon. Like, this whole line of all these Gen 2 Pokemon, other than Porygon, he sucks. Um, I'm really happy to see back. Scizor we used in our Kingdra team. Really, really good Mon. I like it a lot in singles. I think it pairs with Azumarill perfectly. I think those two go together like, uh, you know, strawberry and peanut butter jam stuff. You got you got the reference. It's late, guys. We've been we've been doing stuff all day. But yeah, Scizor is really good. I think Scizor is really good. Uh, Swords Dance sets are good. They took away its ability to get Bug Bite. 
So you have to use Exazor now, which is a 10 base power loss, and you can't eat berries. But it's still a really good Pokemon. Uh, it's going to be better in singles than in doubles, though. Uh, Heracross, we used it in our Zorak team. Very, very good Pokemon. I think Heracross is dope. It's not as good as, like, Urshifu. It's not as good as Poliwrath. Um, it sucks that Heracross struggles, which was popular, right? If the meta is going to be Amoongus, Togekiss in every single team, it's going to be a lot harder to use Heracross. Like, Amoongus, Togekiss, Dragapult, and then, like, fast Pokemon, like Inteleon, Cinderace, Whimsicott. Heracross is going to, like, Heracross is going to struggle. But Heracross is awesome, so it'll make it work. Skarmory coming back. I'm really happy to see Skarmory come back because I think that Skarmory can be just as good, if not better, than Corviknight if played correctly. I think they gave it body press as well. So Skarmory has the potential to be dope because one of the problems with Corviknight, right, was Corviknight could do a lot of stuff. It can go for those roosts, it can go for those body press, iron defenses, whatever. But then it couldn't, like, it couldn't, like, win a game. Like, I feel that, like, I want, I want Skarmory. Like, every single time I've used Corviknight in singles, I've wanted Skarmory. And so maybe I'll use Skarmory. I like Skarmory. But Skarmory's... You can't bring Blissey back and not bring Skarm, Skarmory back. You can't. Skarm Bliss, that's the real peas in the pod. Skarm Bliss are one, one and done. Like, that's the old school play. How many guys know Skarm Bliss? How many guys are Gen 4 players know that Skarm Bliss? I'll do it to somebody. So Kingdra coming back. You saw our team with Kingdra on YouTube. Super, super good Pokemon. Probably one of the top five best Pokemon coming back. It's the best Pokemon for weather. It's the best weather Pokemon coming back. Best Swiss Swim user in the game. You'll love it. So Kingdra's really, really cool. It can also be used with Sniper, like Inteleon. And it gets Focus Energy. So we'll see. Kingdra's really, really good. It's time to talk about the elephant in the room, and that's Porygon 2. Porygon 2 sucks. Porygon 2's not good for competitive play. Because you know how many people have complained about just, like, Dunsparce? Right? They're like, ugh, Dunsparce is the best... Like, Pokemon, I, I can't stop the Trick Room, it can use Pain Split, I can't one-shot it, and it does, I can't do, it ally switches. Porygon 2's like that, but, like, if I were to slam, like, a plus 2 stabbed move, super effective into a Dunsparce, it, sorry, into a, into a Dusclops, it'd get KO'd. If I were to do that into a, did I say Dunsparce? You know what I meant. Um, if I were to do that into a Porygon 2, though, like, I could slam in, like, what is it? What's a good example? Um, let me find a Pokemon. Let me just find one. Freaking. Um, like a Scizor, right? I could use a plus two Life Orb Scizor superpower. And that Porygon 2 would just eat it. It would just eat it. And just set the Trick Room on me. It could eat like it can eat so much. You can't one-shot the Porygon 2. That's like the thing. You just can't one-shot it. And so you have to taunt it. And you have to respect it. It, it probably gets Ally Switch as well. It can use its own recovery and just getting recover. It has a steroid boost in the download ability. Like, do you guys understand that this Pokemon is just, like, way too dumb? But the thing is, like, you have to run Conk, right? And you have to not be intimidated on your Conk. And you have to have a damage multiplier on your Conk because Drain Punch doesn't one-shot it. Like, it, Drain Punch doesn't one-shot it, guys. Drain Punch will not one-shot a full HP defense for against you. It will not. And so, like, do you want to be forced to run Conk? Do you want to be forced to hold a White Herb or, like, a Life Orb or a Choice Band or have close combat? Like... Those things, like, Porygon forces those things to happen. And so, like, all the teams that we're using, like, what is the team we used? The team that we used today. What's, uh, where is it? This team, not, that's not the team. Whatever, you get the idea. Um, you can't do shit to Porygon 2, right? You're just gonna run Amoongus. But the thing is, like, don't, don't get safeguarded. Like, even if you run Amoongus, like, Amoongus can't beat Porygon 2. If it came down to it, like, if it came down to it, he would just Ice Beam you. You know what I mean? And you take half. Because he has an analytic, or sorry, he has a download proc. Yeah, Porygon, Porygon sucks. Like, Porygon is not good for the game. Porygon Z is cool. They shouldn't, have, they shouldn't have brought Porygon 2. Like, I understand you have to to bring Porygon Z, but, like, they could have done something. They could have, like, changed its base stats like they did with Age of Slash. That Pokemon is just way too dumb. But that's my opinion. It also has, like, normal typing. So, like, you could pair it with all those ghost types. Like, Porygon 2, Snorlax, Mimikyu, Dragapult. Oh, that's going to be Amoongus. It's going to be terrible. Uh, what is it? Miltank coming back is actually kind of cool. I like Miltank. Miltank gets some un... Miltank gets some unique po unique stuff, and it has some pretty unique stats. Uh, it has 100 base speed, which is pretty nice, too. What about doesn't Porygon... doesn't get traced? Porygon gets, gets traced, but, like, you don't need to use it. You can just use download. It's better. If you have any physical attack... Sorry, if you have, a, if a, if you have any special attacks on Porygon, trace it, or download's better. But, yeah, it's Porygon. But Miltank's cool. I like Miltank. Is McGarren illegal? It's not. 
Uh, Blissey coming back is really cool. Uh, I've used a lot of Blisseys in the past, and a lot of people think Blissey is going to be a problem as well. More often than not, most people like to run Blissey as like a stall wall using like stealth rocks and singles, thunder waves, soft boils, minimizes. That's not why I like to use Blissey. You guys saw the Blissey that we used in the Kingdra team. It was full special attack defense. You don't need to put any points in any of those stats. Like Blissey with Serene Grace. I've been using, there's probably at least 80 vids on my channel showing off how to use special sweeper Blissey. It's the best Pokemon ever. It's a viable Dynamax option. It gives its own recovery. Doesn't get one-shotted. It's like Porygon 2, but Blissey's actually cool. Like, Porygon 2 is super toxic because it uses Trick Room redirection and it's all lame. But Blissey, Blissey hits you in the face like a man. Blissey's like, fight me like a man. That's right. So I'm really excited that Blissey's back. Uh, we're going to use a lot of Blissey. Blissey goes super well with so many things, and I'm super excited. Like, we seriously use full special attack Blissey. And everyone's like, well, its defense is so low, but it's like its HP is so high. You know, just put full... You can eat one physical attack. You can put a Chopper Berry on it and not have any weaknesses. Like, it's like, it's so good. Uh, Wildra coming back. Another really good uh, normal type. I think, um, yeah, Blissey has nice elemental moves. Yeah, they do. Like, you have a 60% chance to paralyze with a Thunder. That's really nice. Um, what is it? x coming back. x dope. I think x Noivern or x uh Gardevoir is going to be really nice. Uzman, how's it going? x goes for those huge boom bursts. Stab specs boom bursts. Remember, uh, x gets soundproof. So like, you could pair x with like a Telepathy Gardevoir and go boom burst. Or you can pair it with a Telepathy Noivern. You could boom burst with a Noivern. You'll avoid the damage with your soundproof. And then you'll like boom burst back. So you can go double boom burst. Right? It's awesome. Would Clodzer be good on a TR? Um... Probably not. We'll talk about that when we get to that Pokemon. Sharpedo's coming back. That's cool. Uh, Swiss, sorry, Speed Boost Pokemon coming into the game are awesome. The Pokemon I wanted to see the most was Yan Mega. Didn't make it in the game. Um, but Speed Boost Pokemon are good for the game. So we'll see. We used a full defense, Serene Grace, Flamethrower, Blissey, and Singles. It did well. Yep. It's really good. It's just, that's Blissey. The thing about Blissey is like, if I were to send the Blissey out, right? In a situation where like, you would normally just use Thunder Wave, Seismic Toss, stuff like that. Um, and I go for a Thunder on your your water type, on your Gyarados, right? You lose the Gyarados. You're like, cool, I'll send out my Ferrothorn. He used Thunder. Cool, I'm going to Flamethrower your Ferrothorn. You've now seen my Thunder and my Flamethrower. You're like, well, if he has Thunder and Flamethrower, he can't hit my Garchomp, and then they send the Garchomp out, and you Ice Beam it. You see what I mean? It's like, it's the all, all those... Blissey is super good at uh, punishing Pokemon that have those big four times weaknesses, and those Pokemon are super popular. Like, Scizor, Punished. Uh, Skarmory doesn't have four times weaknesses, but has a lot of weaknesses to his common types. Punished. Ferrothorn punished. Uh, Gyarados punished. Uh, so Blissey's really good at stuff like that. You just gotta condition your opponent into it. And once you get like one or two KO, once you get even one of those KOs, a lot of their teams like can't function the way they're supposed to, and then you just kinda win the game from there. Uh, Luke's Ray coming back. Another really good Intimidator coming back, so I'm really happy to see Luke's Ray. Luke's Ray only has one weakness to ground, and you can build it bulky enough to where it's not really that big of an issue. So Luke's Ray is really, really cool. We'll probably use a decent amount of Luke's Ray. Uh, Little Bunny coming back. That's all right. Uh, another fake out user with, uh, I think it gets scrappy, or is that only the Mega Evolution? I don't know. But uh, Little Bunny's cool. Has own tempo. There's some cool own tempo stuff you can do with Little Bunny and Lilligant. So we'll see if that, uh, you know, ends up making some plays. Happening's not that important. Magnezone's important. Uh, we've talked about Magnezone before. Uh, Magnezone, for those of you guys who don't know, can get two really good abilities. One being Sturdy, which is one of the best abilities in the game. And the other one is Steel Pull. So if you have like a, if the opponent has like a Steel Pokemon uh, and you have a Magnezone, they can't switch, which means you can just slap them in the face with a, a Flamethrower, not a Flamethrower, uh, a Thunderbolt or something like that. They might even give, give Magnezone Mystical Fire. Who really knows? I could see him doing it. I could see it just to, just to do it. But, uh, cause everyone always used Hidden Power on it, Hidden Power Fire. And what do you see? Meta gets scrapped. You're talking about the Mega on the Mega Pony, Yeah. But I think Magnezone is really good. I'm going to give you guys a tip. I'm going to give you guys a tip. When you're playing against a Magnezone, if there's a Magnezone in the team preview and you have a Steel type, always have your Steel type be on your left. So if you're picking your Pokemon, make it the second Pokemon you pick. Uh, that means that's a Pokemon you're going to select the moves for first, and you're going you're gonna to want to try to switch out. If you can switch out, if you if it lets you like go into selecting the moves for your secondary Pokemon, that means that they're using Sturdy and they're not using Magnet Pull. Uh, if it doesn't let you switch, it says you can't switch because of Magnet Pull, then they have Magnet Pull. So you can actually scout for their ability, and you wouldn't be able to do that if Magnezone was on the right-hand slot. So, um, it's really smart to always have your Steel types on the left. Just a habit you guys should actually have, is having your Steel types on the left, so you guys can actually scout for that in every single game. Because if it's on the right, and you try to check to see if you can switch, it'll just actually force you to switch, because that's your last Pokemon selecting its last move. 
Linky Licky is a really cool Pokemon. Like I talked about it, a uh, really, really bulky Mon. Great Vest user with Cloud9 to be able to mitigate weather damage. Very, very good stuff. I like Linky Licky. We also see the Tangrowth. Tangrowth's really good in singles. It's similar to um, Tangela, but he gets Regenerator. So a lot of people in Smogon really like Tangrowth. I think Tangrowth's great. Uh, I'll probably try and use it in VGC. Sounds like a really, really fun Pokemon to play with. Porygon Z, also a very, very cool Pokemon. I think Porygon Z is really, really cool. It's probably one of my favorite Scarfed and Spec spawns. So we'll see what Porygon Z can get done. I know Porygon Z has a really cool follow me animation. So when you're running around in the Isle of Armor and Porygon Z is following you, it looks hilarious. So let's see, what are we talking about next? Uh, we're talking about Stoutland. Stoutland coming back is really, really good. Another Intimidator and it gets Sandrush. Sandrush Pokemon are super, super good. Pokemon that can double their speed in the Sandstorm. Stoutland's actually super good because it gets after you, right? So that completely changes the Sand game. You know, the Sun game is the one that usually goes like Lilligant, Torkoal, you go for After You Eruptions. Imagine if you can go for like After Use and just slam in like absolute, like you can go Giggle with Stoutland, right? And that means you can play fast with the Stoutland, Giggle with the After Use, or you can play slow with the Giggle with, or you can go like T-Tars, right? It's super, super good. You know, is that Jayoki dropping the big sub for five months? Thank you so much, my friend. We're just doing a little bit of a talk, talking about all the Pokemon that are coming back. Thank you so much for that big sub. How come Stoutland gets Sand Rush? That's just... It just does. Stout one's amazing. They bring back hella normal types. I think they did, yeah. Because ghosts are ghosts are freaking busted, that's why. But yeah, Stout one's good. Really happy to see it back. We'll play around it a lot. I caught one, so I'm going to use it. And after you T-Tar. Yeah, that's dope, right? Dragapult, never heard of it, right? That's really good. Uh, Scoliopede, I'm happy to see it back. It gets Baton Pass. It gets Speed Boost. It's cool Pokemon. Really cool typing. I almost used one today in today's team, but uh, we'll save it for a little bit. Lilligant coming back is also really, really nice. Another after user, Sleep Powder. So people like to play Torkoal Venusaur, right? With like Sleep Powders and stuff like that. And that's really cool. But like Lilligant's way better because it gets Encore, Roleplay, After You, uh, Sleep Powder, Leaf Storm, um, way too, like, uh, what is that? Worry Seed. Lilligant gets a crap ton of support moves. And Lilligant is the sun Pokemon that you need. Lilligant is amazing. Seriously, thousands and thousands of dollars have been won by players using competitive Lilligant sets. And I love Lilligant. Lilligant is definitely the sauce for Sun teams. Very excited to see it back. Crookedale coming back. Another Intimidator. Uh, cool to see it back. I think it has valuable sets for Intimidate, but also for the Anger Point. We talked about it with the Pinsir and the Tauros earlier. Crookedale is probably the best one to use. You kind of want to pair the Crookedale with the Togekiss, so you can go for the uh, Self Extreme Speed Crit to activate the plus six attack, and then you can go for those big earthquakes and Kogus's flying type, and we'll be able to avoid the damage. So really, really good stuff from uh, Crookedile. A lot of people like Crookedile as well. Zorak is the next Pokemon that's coming up. So Zorak busted the best Pokemon you've ever seen in your life. For those of you guys who don't know, Zorak disguises itself as the last Pokemon you pick. So if it's a singles game, it'll be the last Pokemon, and in, in, it'll be the third Pokemon you pick in Battle Spot singles. It'll be the sixth Pokemon you pick in like Smogon singles and in a VGC game, it'll be the fourth Pokemon you pick. So if my team is Charizard, Whims or sorry, if it's like Charizard, Zorark, Whimsicott, Aegislash, when I send the Zorark out as the lead, it will disguise itself as Aegislash until it gets hit with the move. And there's no way for your opponent to scout in the menus to see if you're a Zorark. That's not a thing, that's a myth. So Zorark is busted, it gets a lot of really cool new tools, and we're gonna use a ton of Zorark content on this channel. If you haven't already seen it, maybe you should check it out. We have a lot. We already have like, we probably have 20 or 30 different uh, Zorark games on this channel, showing off different sets. Physical Zorark, Special Zorark, Support Zorark, Scarf, Specs, Band, Sash, Quick Claw. We've done everything. We even have a, a video showing like the top five, like different types of Zorark sets that you can run. That's a video that I have that's a pretty, pretty well-known video on this channel as well. Emoga coming back. I'm really, really happy to see Emoga back because it's a fast Encore user. It's a flying type that can uh, still use Discharge. So you can pair like, you can go Crocodile Emolga and go EQ Discharge. And that's really, really nice. And he gets uh, Motor Drive as well, which is similar. It's similar to Volt Absorb. It's similar to Lightning Rod. It doesn't draw on the attacks like Lightning Rod, but it gives you a speed boost if you get hit by one. And that's really nice. So Emolga's actually going to see play. I'll use it. I think Emolga's really good. Uh, Amoongus coming back is a little bit of a problem as well. Similar to Porygon 2, it forces your opponent to respect a lot more options. Um, it forces your opponent... So, like, if you were to look at... Uh, why not Rotom Fan? Rotom Fan's good. Um, the problem is, like, most... The problem... Like, the reason why you don't use Rotom Fan uh, is because most uh, EQ Pokemon... Like, if something's using Earthquake, it probably has Mold Breaker, right? So, like, it's a it's an Excadrill. And you would one-shot your Rotom. Well, you wouldn't one-shot the Rotom fan, but that's 
you get you get the idea. That's why you don't normally use Rotom. And the thing is, Amogus just has a lot more uh, unique support moves than Rotom does. But Amoongus is a problem. Uh, Amoongus gets, like, if you're going to compare Amoongus to, like, Butterfree, Butterfree gets, uh, you know, the 99.6% accuracy sleep powder. Amoongus gets Spore. They both get Rage Powder. But Amoongus is a lot better because it has, uh, it's not reliant. So, like, Butterfree needs the compound eyes to do those sleep powders. Amoongus gets Regenerator. Amoongus gets Effect Spore. Amoongus is generally bulkier. So, like, even if you, if, like, if I live with an Amoongus and you lead with a Talon Flame and you Dynamax your Talon Flame and you go for that crazy all-in airstream with your talent flame on my Amoongus, and I'm just full HP defense, you don't kill me. <laughs> like, that's ridiculous. That's, like, absolutely nuts. Like, Amoongus, like, oh, like, you're gonna use your Arcanine, and you're gonna go for, like, a Flare Blitz? Like, I might not die. If, like, if I intimidate you, I'm just totally living. You know, like, is, is that's, that's just crazy nuts. It lives through everything. It just has, it's one of the bulkiest Pokemon ever created, and the fact that it's a slow Spore user means if it actually gets a Spore off, you haven't even started your sleep turns yet, so it's really hard to play around it. It gets a bunch of really cool moves like Clear Smog after you, so you can after you in Trick Room. So like I can lead like a Moongus Dragapult and go all in with my Pult. I can use my Moongus for Rage Powders, for Spores. If you happen to get a Trick Room up or something like that, I can just after you my own Pult and just keep on trucking along. So like a Moongus is like actually kind of dumb. It's like kind of dumb. Is Porygon Z good? It is pretty good. It is pretty good. Do you think Baton Pass will have a bit more play due to Dynamax boost? I don't. Um, I do not think that Baton Pass is going to be that good. I think that, like, the only way that the Baton Pass could be good is because the meta might be slowing down a little bit, but you'd have to, like, you'd have to go, like, fake out Baton Pass in prison shit. I don't even know how that would work. When can we use the new Pokemon on the VD Slider? We don't know yet. We really don't know. Uh, Mindshow is the next Pokemon we're going to talk about, though. Mindshow's busted. I think Mindshow is a Pokemon I'm super excited to use. It's above 100 base speed, which means it's amazing. Fake Out, Rock Slide, Wide Guard, Knock Off. This Pokemon gets it all. Quick Guard. This Pokemon gets Faint. So many good moves. I love Mindshow. I love this Pokemon. I'm going to use it a lot, a lot, a lot. I think it's amazing. I think it's so good. What do you think about Belladrum, Azumarill, and Moongus? It's like, that's not, that was, that was good like two years ago, but like you would lose to a Dynamax that resisted it. Like, all it would take is me just, like, Dynamaxing, like, a Dragapult. It's like, okay. I don't think that... The, the thing is, like, a Zoomerill... Sorry, a Zoomerill. Um, Amoongus plays good support to, like, a teammate that's using a supporting support move. So, like, you go Rage Powder and then set your speed control, not, like, your damage boosting move. Like, I, the only way you could even get away with that would be, like, Amoongus Inteleon and then set up Focus Energy because you're just going to one-shot everyone after that. But the, um, the Belly Drum Azumarill is not going to be that good. It You just don't one-shot the Dynamax Pokemon. You just don't one-shot them. What Pokemon are we on? We're still on Mindshow. Mindshow's really good. I think Mindshow's dope. I think Drodagon's actually kind of cool. I have no clue how I'm going to use it, but I think it has a high enough defense stat with Mold Breaker that I could make it work. And so I'm going to try it. I think it'll be a cool Pokemon in singles. Uh, Bufalant. I call this guy the Afro Tauros. I've never used one, but uh, um, maybe it'll work. Who really knows? I think it has potential, but uh, yeah, a lot of normal types. Volcarona. I a lot of people are like, that's a use Volcarona. It's so good. I can't wait to see, someone said, I can't wait to see you use a cell rock with a lichen rock, self-procking a policy on your Volcarona. I was like, bro, I don't want to one-shot it. And uh, I think Volcarona's okay, but the thing is, like, Volcarona also gets Rage Powder. It might still get Tailwind, I don't really know. But it's really hard to use Volcarona because it's such a glass cannon, right? It's such a cannon. Um, really high special attack, 100 base speed's nice, but tons of weaknesses on this thing. And 90% of the time, guys, 90% of the time, you're better off using a Charizard. I promise you, you're better off using a Charizard. Volcarona ain't got that wildfire, guys. And they have the same base speed. You're better off using Charizard 90% of the time. Uh, the only time you ever see Volcarona ever see play is in a meta where you're fully developed. And what I mean by fully developed is you know everything about the meta. And so you can correctly condition your opponents into bringing the right thing. So let's say Porygon gets so big, it gets out of control. We see a ton of fighting types to check that. And the fighting types have like fighting coverage, protect, maybe a dark move to hit the ghost if they have to fight a ghost. And then maybe like one other move. And it's probably not a rock move. Um, you know, Volcarona's are better than Charizard there because you can tech it for a, a bulky Rage Powder redirection mon. Like Volcarona in past formats where it's actually been good is only been good once like that type of stuff has been too prevalent. You only ever see Volcarona the last, like, month of a yearly season being legal, and I think it's going to be similar this way. Uh, I think it gets some cool tools. It gets, like, Hurricane, gets some cool stuff, but, like, there's no reason to run Volcarona when every single person's running Inteleon, Cinderace, Dragapult. There's no reason. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. 
Falcarona is not as good as Charizard. And so everyone's like, Falcarona, oh, yeah, it's like, it's not as good as Charizard. Unfortunately, unfortunately. Talonflame, coming back, Talonflame's cool. Um, yeah, I think Talonflame's dope. Gale Wings gives priority to flying type moves when you're at full HP. So if you use a Brave Bird, you're not under full, you're not yeah, at full HP. Point. Rock Slide's too good in VGC. It's not, Rock Slide's not good in this format, though. Thank you for the follow. It's not good in this format, because you can't, you can't flinch G-Max Mons and D-Max Mons. So it's like, there's a lot less Rock Slides. It used to be, there's, there used to be two Rock Slides per team on every single team. And that's just not a thing anymore. Yeah, uh, Tailwind. Yeah, Talonflame still gets Tailwind, gets Brave Bird. Uh, it's a great check to Whimsicott. Uh, I don't think it's going to be that good, though. But it will see play. So that's awesome. Um... Rock Wolf. We'll talk about it. It's uh, it's near the bottom of the list. We'll talk about it. Um, we see the uh, Dragalgy. I think Dragalgy is going to be pretty cool, actually. Dragon Poison is really, really cool typing. And you could use a correct Reduction Berry there and really get some stuff done. I think that Dragalgy is like the thing that the meta needs right now. If like if if it was if Dragalgy was the only Pokemon being added, that'd be super cool because it dumpsters Primarina. Like, I'm super excited for that. It's really good. Uh, it's good versus Primarina, and it's good versus all three starters. Do you understand? It's good versus Inteleon, Cinderace, and Rillaboom. You have to make different spreads for all three, kind of. But it has a good matchup versus all three of them. And so, I'm not really a fan of that Pokemon, but I do really like that typing. I miss using, like, Naganadel. Uh, I miss using, um, yeah, Naganadel. And that's good typing. So, we'll see if we can get something done. It also has adaptability, which means you get, like, a second stab on top of those moves. Very, very cool Pokemon. Really happy to see it back. Uh, Claw Etzer is really cool as well. I plan on using it. Claw Etzer is probably my favorite shiny in the whole game. It's red. It looks like a crazy, awesome lobster thing. Mega Launch is a really cool ability. Um, gives you a, you know, additional boost to all pulse moves. So, like, you know, Water Pulse is boosted. Dark Pulse is boosted. Dragon Pulse is boosted. But you know what else is boosted? Heal Pulse. And that's the reason why it's really good. It's like a 66% Heal Pulse, and that's dope. So, yeah, I'll use this Pokemon. I don't think it'll be that good on Trick Room teams. It's, it'll be better on teams where you have to, like, protect your Dynamax Mon. So you would go, like, you'd go, like, Amoongus Dragapult, Rage Powder until your Amoongus dies, send out the uh, Claw Clawitzer, restore yourself back up to full, and then you'd be fine. Yeah, it boosts Aura moves, too. So moves like Aura Sphere as well. Very, very good. Um, I actually made a really, really cool team. Maybe I'll make it again, where you skill swap your Mega Launcher on to Lucario, so Lucario can use Aura Sphere and Heal Pulse. That's I have a video of that on my YouTube channel, um, where you you transfer all you transfer its ability to Lucario, and Lucario can then go for all the different pulse boosting moves. And it's actually like really really cool. Uh, we've used Rotom Fan before. You just have to you have to make like a Discord or a, a discharge bot. That team was lit. Yeah, that was a fun team. Uh, after that, Emolga. I don't think Emolga's going to see play. It doesn't even get fake out, so probably not. The best thing Clefki can do is that it's a fairy that doesn't have poison reduce. So it doesn't take poison damage. Uh, it takes neutral damage from steel. Uh, it's a dual screens, and that's pretty much it for Clefki. Clefki's not that great. There's better Pokemon later on in the list we'll talk about. Polistan's pretty popular. You can go for uh, Water Shriek and plays to give it a ton of compaction boost. It gives it a defense boost every single time. Uh, it's actually going to be pretty decent Maximon. It's going to play similar to the way Gastrodon plays, where... Um, use it as a coverage for like water damage. You get really, really big uh, Dynamax. Did I, did I call that uh, Emolga? I said, yeah, I meant Dedenne. They're both Pikachu clones. But yeah, Palestine's really, really okay. Um, sorry guys, it's really, really late. I've been, I've been going for a long time. It's been a long day today. But Palestine will see play. Uh, there's a lot of people that just like that Pokemon. And it plays, it's a pretty easy team to play. You just self-proc with like a weakness policy and you get like plus four, plus five defense plus two attack, special attack, and uh, you just go to town with max moves, getting more special D. It's my second time this stream. I mean, oh well, what are you going to do? Uh, up next is Lycanroc, right? Lycanroc, all three forms are actually really good. Uh, I think the Sand Rush one's good, No Guard one's good, and the other one, I think that's Tough Claws. All three of them are usable. A lot of people have been asking me how to use Lycanroc. Maybe I'll make a video dedicated exclusively to that, but the best thing I can say right now for Lycanroc is that all three forms are good, but you have to build the team around the Lycanroc. You can't just use the same Lycanroc in every single situation. They're all completely different. And that's that's pretty much it. They're all completely different. And I think they're going to be really reliant on the TRs that they get that I haven't looked at yet. Because back the reason why they weren't actually that great back in the day was because their TR, their, their offensive move pool was lacking. It was really pigeon-held into being mostly rock damage, which was not great. 
Uh, Kumfei is a really cool Pokemon. I don't know Kumfei it's Trick Room, but if it does, that's cool. But it has an ability that gives it priority moves to all its healing moves. So it goes for those big heal pulse that are boosted by priority, so you don't really have to worry about that. I think Kumfei will see play for sure. We've used it before in teams. It's a cool Pokemon. I like it. Lorantis. Lorantis is dope. I think Lorantis is probably one of the best contrary mons. And I'm really happy that more contrary mons are coming out. And so it's not just Malamar now. So Lorantis gets superpower, so it can uh, go for superpower. Guys, remember contrary says whenever you get a stat drop, it becomes boost instead and vice versa. So if you superpower, you get an attack and a defense boost. And it's actually a really bulky Pokemon. This is going to be a, the only Pokemon that can actually use Leaf Blade. And I won't complain about it. So we'll see how good Lorantis is. And last but not least, Magarna is not legal. It might be legal in singles. I've never used one. That's the list. I did it. Holy moly, guys. Holy moly. We got through the whole list. I can't believe that took so long. That took a really, really long time, and I'm super burnt out. We've been making multiple videos. We made two videos today. We streamed twice today. Like, holy moly. That's a, that's a lot of work. So thank you guys so much for sticking through all this. Hopefully, I enlightened you guys a little bit as to how some of these Pokemon have been played, as to how they're going to see play, and maybe give you a couple ideas. So, uh... Yeah, that's pretty much it.